they feel real good when people come up and talk. And they're able to the yeah, there will be people that have come up. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, what, what kind of what kind of thing are you talking about? Persecution. Jesus said this. Well, the Bible says this: all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So that, I mean, that's always going to happen. So you just how to deal with it is to make sure you know what the Bible says, read your Bible, and be in communion with God in prayer. Sometimes even fast. You ever fast before? No, you never fasted before. Are you born again? You don't know if you're born again? No, I'm not talking about baptism. So like, <clears throat> there's baptism, but Jesus said you must be born again. So what being born again is is you forsake all known sin, you confess your sin, you forsake it, you put your faith in Jesus Christ, what He did on the cross for you, put it with all your heart, right? You believe with all your heart. And when you do, when you truly do that, when you truly forsake your sin, he'll send you the Holy Ghost and it'll come and live inside of you. And then, then you get baptized. But the first, the first step is you must be born again. That's what Jesus said in John 3. So you can know if you're born again. And you'll know if you're born again is, is you have a testimony. So like before I come to the Lord, I, I was living in sin. I was, I was getting drunk every single day smoking two packs a day, cussing out of my mouth, just living for myself, watching pornography, cheating on my wife, doing wicked things like that. But I forsook those things. I knew I was going to go to hell. My God was, he was using, um, he was using his spirit to convict me. I started reading some things in the Bible. And when I, when I read some things in the Bible, it started really convicting me. And so basically in 2018, I got on the side of my truck and I knew I was on my way to hell and I was under conviction. And I cried out to God for mercy. And he saved me right there. He saved me, changed me. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. So my life became brand new that day. All those things that I used to do now, I hate to do those things. Like all those things that I never thought I could stop doing, I stopped it because God set me free from it. And so that's being born again. So the Bible says, then being made free from sin, so that's, that's one part, you may become free from sin. Then being free from sin and become a servant to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So when I became born again, God set me free from my sins and he, I became his servant now. And now the fruit of that is I live holy before God by his grace. So those things, like I said, those things that I used to do, I don't go back to them because I have grace now. And grace is power. Grace empowers you and teaches you not to sin. So that's being born again, is your old life, your old life becomes crucified and behold a new, what's your name? Aiden. Aiden, be, behold a new Aiden comes forth. So that old Aiden dies and a new Aiden comes to life. And that's the power of, God, of Jesus Christ and the resurrection that, that took place when he died for our sins and went to the, went to the uh, cross and he rose again from the grave. It's the same thing. You die to yourself and now you rise to new life in Christ. So you'll live holy. You'll live separate from the world. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. And God says, I'll receive you. That's like a picture of repentance. So you'll know if you're born again, like I'm saying, if you're a new creature. Are you thinking you're a new creature? You don't think you're a new creature? Well then, the Bible says this, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. So you try to hide things from God, you know, you, those secret sins maybe you don't want to tell nobody about, that you're hiding, you think no one sees you, you know that God sees you. Because the Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So he sees your whole life. Your whole life is before God, exposed. So there's nothing you do that you hide from God. But anyways, so the Bible says, He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. So you need to fear God. 
You need to fear the Lord. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So you fear God, depart from your sin, cry out to Jesus for mercy, and he'll save you from your sins. Because Jesus said, he that sins is a servant of sin. Is that you? Are you a servant of sin? So he, so whosoever, and that's fine, honesty is the best policy. Whosoever committeth sin is a servant to sin, and a servant abideth not in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son, Jesus, shall make you free, Aiden, you're free indeed. And like I said, then that new Aiden comes forth. But only, only when you just go cry out to God and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I've sinned, God. I know I deserve hell. Lord, please save me from my sins. When you do that, if you truly mean it with all your heart, God will save you right there. He'll save you like this, man. And that's what happened to me four years ago on the side of my truck in St. Petersburg. I just cried out to God, and He delivered me from my sins. And I've never been the same since. And now I read His Word all the time. He's got my Bible right now. I, I read His Word all the time. I pray. I have communion with Him. He told me to come here today to preach for this very moment right here. Because you're being honest, right? Yeah. You want to be saved, right? And all you have to do is cry out to God. You can be saved right now. You can just ask for God's forgiveness right now if you wanted to. But I would say this. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow's not promised, Aiden. It's not promised. So I'm gonna, uh, I am gonna—I want to pray for you, if that's all right. And then I want you to get out of here and go into your room and cry out to God. Or cry out to God right here. Whatever. But I want you to cry out to God because if you know, if you know you're on your way to hell, then cry out to Jesus. He'll save you, man. He'll deliver you. He wants to save you, man. But we have to surrender. If we don't surrender, we don't get saved. If we try to hold back any little thing, trying to hold on to any little thing, you'll never get saved. You've got to let it all go. You've got to surrender. And that's what I did. I gave up my whole life. I counted the cost. I want to pray for you. in that building right there right now but this is more important to, me to, to really take this in you know yeah. if you really feel like you feel like you're under are you convicted right now you like you feel bad yeah yeah so that holy ghost is trying to convict you of your sin so if you feel bad right now or ashamed of who you are it's because you've sinned against god i mean just just like i had in the past but yeah. So all you have to do is cry out to God for mercy. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So forsake your sin. Confess it. Forsake it. Cry out to God. I would go into your room right now and go do it. Because you're not promised to live another day, man. If you die in your sin, you're going to hell forever and you ain't getting out and this day right here you're going to think about every single day i could have got right with god if you feel like you're under conviction just yield to it and cry out to god and god will save you from your sins man i'm going to pray for you can i pray for you and then i want you to go into your room man to cry out to god dude get right with god forget the class go get right with god that's more important your soul is eternal that class will be here next week it'll be here ne next time go get right with god you still may even go back to your class but just go get right with God. Don't waste any more time, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're under conviction right now, yield to it. Don't, don't, don't say, oh, I'll just wait. Just do it now. You know what I mean? That's what I say. It's up to you. you know? Let me pray for you. Father God, I come before you with Aiden. Lord, I pray that you'd put your fear upon this man, God. That you would put your fear in his heart. God, that he would fear you, Lord God. He would fear... Uh, what will happen to him if he doesn't call upon you and get cry out to you for mercy? I pray that you'll grant him repentance on his salvation, God. I pray that you will uh, you'll convict him, Lord God, that he won't even be able to sit through his class, God. That he'll have to get right with you, God. Let your fear and dread come upon him, that he will call out to Jesus for mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all you have to do, man. Just cry out to God and mean it with all your heart. That's it. And then you'll be able to live for God.
how you want, how, those things that you want to do, then you'll be able to do it for God. God wants to save you, man. Jesus said He come to save. He come to seek and save that which is. Nah, he come to seek, seek and save that which is lost, man. And he'll save you from your sins, but you've got to repent, man. You have to forsake your sin. You have to realize you've sinned against God, and you're deserving of hellfire for it. And Jesus can save you if you call upon His name. He'll save you, man. All right. My name's Alan. Thank you. Aiden, right? Aiden. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe I'll see you around someday. All right, man. Get right with God, man. Jewish, and I know that.